Well, welcome everybody to CrowingRoosterProphecy.com this 8th day of July uh, 2023 from Northern California. So I was just thinking of that number 8, the 8th of July, a number of new beginnings. And, and maybe this will be a new beginning for some of you today. And, you know, I just think about how... <clears throat> How heaven declares to us that his mercies are new every morning. And I'm already <laughs> feeling the presence of the Lord today in a powerful way and so thankful for him in that way. And so I hope that this video is a blessing to you today. And so this is really going to be uh, part two of the video that I did yesterday um, called the now of the bridegroom the now of the bridegroom and today is th this part two which is the now of his appearing the now of his appearing and just i believe that this is going to be a blessing to you today and you know we've been navigating through the final night watch just before dawn for 27 months now now, I've been talking a lot in the month of June about 623. We did a number of videos highlighting 623. Now, do you remember what 623 was? Uh, it's a bride adorned for her husband, Revelation 21, verse 2 in Hebrew, Gematria. Now, 723 um, is what? <laughs> is the Lord your maker is your husband Isaiah 54 verse 5 in Hebrew Gematria the Lord your maker and so just such a beautiful presentation from heaven and uh, you know we're talking about navigating this final night watch just before the break of dawn you know I was thinking of this example today of how uh, Christopher Columbus navigated from Spain to America with a magnetic compass pointed at the North Star Polaris, the Little Dipper. And so here's the Little Dipper, and here is Polaris, the North Star. And, uh, you know, no matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, you know you are facing north if you're looking at the North Star. And so, you know, I was thinking of the scripture verse in Psalms 48, verse 2, where it says, The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the north, on the side of the north, the city of our great king. And so, you know, it just brings everything into focus. And, you know, I had something really interesting, you know, happen today that I want to sh begin sharing with you you about and uh, and this beautiful reality that I want to express to you because Yeshua said to me today he said he says Phil did you know that Enoch is a picture of the bride in 2023 that Enoch is a picture of the bride in 2023 and so you may remember these scripture passages uh, in reference to Enoch, Hebrews 11, verse 5, the chapter of the Hall of Fame of Faith. It says here that by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. And of course, I'm thinking of Genesis 5:24 as well, where it says, Enoch walked in close fellowship with God and then one day disappeared because God took him. And so today I heard Yeshua say, Enoch is a picture of the bride in 2023. How beautiful it is and how profound that statement really is for us here uh, on July 8th of 2023 and so I just wanted to share this uh, part two with you today and so of course we already did the the now of the bridegroom and I hope that uh, again that that was a blessing to you and so this is part two the now of his 
appearing. And so, again, what an honor and privilege it is to share this with you today now, the now of his appearing. Now, I hope you were encouraged and blessed by the video, the now of the bridegroom. And so, I just mentioned that all of that came out of an encounter with Yeshua on Thursday, July 6th. As I was typing a response to a sister in Australia, I actually got that wrong. <laughs> she, uh, I thought she was from Brazil, but she, uh, Genevieve is from Australia, so forgive me, Genevieve. Uh, so I was just typing out an email response, and when I wrote the words, we often miss the now of his appearing, I was suddenly in a beautiful now moment of the Prussia the very presence, the very manifest presence of God. And so it was just a beautiful moment. And out of that, I was able to share with you that beautiful revelation um, of the now of the bridegroom. And so we're speaking today about the now of his appearing. Now, this morning, there is a longing in my spirit for more of heaven and less of this world you know encounters with heaven leave you with an insatiable hunger for more of him who is heaven <laughs> let me say that again i believe that a true encounter with heaven will leave you with an insatiable hunger for more of him who is heaven and i was thinking of these couple scripture verses today one in Colossians 1, 19 through 20, where it says, For in him all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. And in Hebrews 1, 3, it says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact, exact representation of the being, of his being, sustaining all things. I was thinking, oh, I <laughs> typed out sons. And it were sons. Maybe that isn't a mistake that we are to radiate God's glory and we are representations of who he is, aren't we, as sons? So maybe that isn't a mistake, but we know the Son of the Most High is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being and just how beautiful that is. And so, you know, I have often shared with you some of my personal encounters with heaven, uh, personal encounters with the Prussia, the presence, the manifest presence of, of God. And so uh, I wanted to share this with you. I was uh, at breakfast yesterday with a dear friend, Ed. Ed is actually the one who uh, gave me this computer that I'm presently using. I don't know if you remember, but I experienced a couple serious service attacks back in May and one of them actually took my computer completely out and so uh, that was kind of the time period when I was revealing who I believe uh, is the Antichrist <laughs> and so uh, I don't believe it was an accident that I was doing that and got a a number of service attacks that led to me actually losing the computer and the hard drive completely but Ed gave me this computer that I'm presently using so just so thankful for Ed and so we were at breakfast on Friday yesterday and we were just recounting uh, kind of a similar experience remember over the last number of months I shared with you a profound experience that I had in Carmel and uh, you know, I awoke the uh, the morning of November thirteenth at uh, in twenty twenty two at three a.m. Uh, and I awoke to an encounter with Yeshua. Just a beautiful experience that I've shared with you many times. Now, um, I have often heard this mission bell in Carmel by the sea uh, over the last six months in the spirit and interesting that Ed has actually visited himself, him and his wife, the, um, the mission in Carmel. Uh, it is actually the second oldest mission uh, in California. Of course, the missions are iconic. 
uh, symbol in California, and of course the oldest one is in, in San Diego. So this was the second oldest one in all of California, this mission in Carmel. And so we were just uh, remembering and, and talking about that, and uh, I was relating to him my encounter with Yeshua in Carmel on that day, and as I was doing that, um, suddenly the atmosphere in the restaurant completely changed, uh, and uh, the presence of the Parousia was very evident, and both of us were overcome by the glory and the presence as we spoke and, and shared together about our love for Yeshua. And, you know, I just wanted to communicate, you know, growing up as a child, I always had a, a hunger and a thirst to know God. And, you know, raised up in a, the American Christian culture, the thing that I personally experienced is that there was a real void in the area of the now of God. You know, we just talked the other day about out of Revelation that the God who was the God who is and the God who is to come. And so often in our services uh, on Sunday morning and even our teaching that we receive has a, you know, a powerful historic application. But so often we miss the now of the bridegroom and the now of his appearing. And I always had a deep hunger to know the Lord of the now. And uh, it was so often that it was missing growing up in the American Christian culture that I knew. And, you know, I can uh, honestly say this, that in the 65 years that I have been a Christian, I have never, ever witnessed a pastor ever on a Sunday morning service have to stop and because he could not contain his emotions and begin to weep and cry because of the now of the bridegroom, because of the now of his appearing, the Prussia, the presence was so overwhelming that he could not contain himself. And I think that that is a crying shame, really, and just uh, a black mark on the church that why is it that our generation you know just uh you know for example pew research has indicated to us through the research that this generation uh has departed from uh departed from the lord and even many of our uh, our own children raised in the church have departed from the faith not living for the Lord. I think that that is a plague that is a present in the church. And I think that if we had been able and are able to communicate the Prussia, the now of the bridegroom to our children, that that would change and transform their lives in a very personal way. And you know, I just think that that is so important. I can remember I was preaching in a Sunday morning service uh, in um, Moreno Valley. I was invited to preach at a, a church service. And so at the end of the service, I invited all of the, the teenagers up. And um, I communicated to them how important it was that each of them had a personal relationship with God, a personal encounter with Him that changed their life uh, day by day. And so what I did is I began to minister the presence, the, um, the prusy of God, the now of the bridegroom, the now of His appearing. And as I did that, there were about 20 or 30 teens at the front of the group all lined up and I just went down the line and began to lay hands on each one of them and many of them began to weep many of them began to shake many of them began to cry many of them began to experience the Perusia of God 
And I think that those encounters can never be understated. They cannot. Because in a culture and in the world that we live in today and all that children are facing, I think that encounters with heaven is what we desperately need in this hour. And so, you know, I wanted to share that with you, that experience that I had with Ed yesterday. And I'm so thankful for every one of those encounters like that. And so just thinking about that every encounter that that we have really should center on Yeshua and to me if we have an encounter that doesn't include him and isn't about him to me it's a worthless encounter and a lot of people share their dreams and visions but they're flat because if they don't have Yeshua in the in the emphasis and uh, the now of the bridegroom present, and I don't think it's worth our while. So again, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now Enoch walked in close fellowship with God, then one day disappeared because God took him. Now Yeshua said to me today, Enoch is a picture of the bride in 2023. Enoch is a picture of the bride in 2023. Now even now again, tears are rolling down my face as I think of the awesome beauty and splendor of heaven's champion, of uh, heaven's champion and our eternal victorious king. Now this passage has become a rally cry from heaven in July of 2023 and been my prayer for you. And this is uh, what it is out of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. It says, But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry uh, that is much more excellent than the old covenant, for he mediates a better covenant, since it is enacted with better promises. So Jesus is the surety of a better covenant. Now I was thinking of how Moses communed with Yahweh on the mountain and uh, his appearance was changed. I love these scripture passages of these encounters that the saints of old had. I often <laughs> I often focus I remember even as a child <laughs> reading of these encounters and so fascinated and drawn to that reality of the now of the bridegroom and the now of his appearing. And so Moses communed with Yahweh Vahe on the mountain and his appearance was changed under an old covenant. Now Enoch walked faithfully with God and then he was no more because God took him away. Now I was thinking of the 70 elders in Exodus chapter 24 verses 9 through 10 or 12 who met with Yahweh Vahe on the mountain and shared a meal with him under an old covenant. I just, this passage has always rocked my world. These 70 elders meeting with God and sharing a meal with him. <laughs> now it says this about their experience. On the mountain, these men saw the God of Israel and he was standing on something that looked like blue sapphires, as clear as the sky and they ate and drank together. Now you could just imagine them on the mountain and just right above them hovered a sea of glass, a sapphire sea of glass, and his feet were upon that glass. And as they looked up, they saw Yahweh literally with their physical eyes. Uh, but Hebrews 8, 6 again says, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. And so this passage becomes a rally cry from heaven today uh, on July 8th and 9th of 2023 in your behalf. And so, you know, my prayer and my cry is that in this month of July, that you would know that now of the bridegroom and that you would know the now of his appearing.
And may this truly be your heart's deepest desire and longing because we have a covenant of better promises. Now look what it says in Hebrews 12 verse 22. But you have come, have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. And you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Now did you notice it didn't say you will come at a future date but that you have already come to Mount Zion. Remember what we were talking about? The fact that uh, that he has already come to us and that he has already come for us and that we are presently seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so that's a reality that we often miss and that we that is afforded to us and... Um, here at CrowingRoosterProphecy.com, I want to communicate this reality, and may it be your reality, may it be our reality, may it be your experience today. And so, uh, so what are we waiting for, right? What are we waiting for? For He has already come to us, and He has already come for us, but so often we are looking for the caboose right i was talking about the train of his glory that appeared when he first came and we were looking for the caboose and then why is that <laughs> and we so often see youtube videos that are talking about the rapture date over and over and over again and focusing all their attention on that but we were missing the now of the bridegroom and the now of his appearing. And I feel as if heaven is saying that it's time for the bride. It's time for the church of Yeshua to focus on the now of the bridegroom, the now of his appearing. So that like Enoch, we can be translated that we will not see death and he was not found because God had translated him and before his translation he had this testimony that he walked with God and so we're speaking of the Prusia today and I want to give you the priestly blessing as I finish today as I am a descendant of the tribe of Levi may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you and may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you today and I was thinking of Isaiah 60 where it says, Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It says, Darkness, the people, and gross darkness, the nations, but the glory of the Lord shall rise upon you. So let this be the hour, Father, we pray, where the glory of the Lord arises upon your church. And so together, we are very much aware of that uh, there is a future physical coming of the Lord for his bride. But let's focus in this hour on the now of the bridegroom and the now of his appearing. And so we together say, even so come, Lord Jesus and the Spirit and the bride say so on this eighth day of July, 2023. Maranatha, have a very blessed weekend from crowingroosterprophecy.com.